interested to see um, how widespread these areas are. Look at this! <laughs> we got, just got the surface and it's yeah. oxic. It's very light yeah. up at yeah. the surface. Yeah. So that means it has oxygen yeah. in the surface part of the core and then it goes black. So it, the core has no oxygen. The core is cut in half and reveals more information about the state of the seafloor. Wow, there's a little worm here. Now this is the interesting new inhabitant in, in the Baltic Sea, which came some 10 years ago with ballast water from other parts of the world into the Baltic. And it's a Havstborst musk in mm -hmm. Swedish, and it's uh, it's, it's spread tremendously fast into to, to the Baltic and now is found almost everywhere. It's yeah. very common. Yeah. The discovery of life on the seabed shows that the water quality around Stockholm is improving. There is enough oxygen for organisms to survive and thrive. It's interesting because one of the things that we see is that the number of dead zones around the world is rapidly increasing. And so that we actually find an area where they're decreasing is extremely important. It means that um, as humans, we can reverse the process and make the systems better. The situation in the Philippines is less promising. The region lacks adequate sewage systems and water treatment plants. As a result, Wastewater is often pumped into the ocean unfiltered. Germs, chemicals, and nutrients thus directly feed the algae in their preferred habitat, the warm, nutrient-rich coastal areas. But for the people dependent on the sea, even modern science will not be able to solve their problems. We have 7,100 islands. It's going to be very, very expensive to monitor all the areas. To me, maybe the ideal is having a monitoring system per 100 kilometers or even less of the coastline. It's a dream. The reality seems gloomy. The people in the Philippines will need to continue to live for many more decades with the risks and dangers of the killer algae.